So how did this book all come about? This book came about when I was in college. Um, my mother gave me a transcript of my grandmother's history, uh, an oral history that she'd done with uh, an academic at the University of Michigan. Uh -huh. And I was coming up on my senior honors thesis and I needed something meaningful to write about. Um, I had the idea to, to learn more about the story. And, and once you, were, you were at Stanford at the time? Yeah, when I was at Stanford. Oh. Um, and when my mom gave me this transcript, um, it was also around the time that I'd gone to Israel for the first time, so I was thinking about what it meant to be Jewish, um, what like particular, you know, what was I particularly attached to in that identity, what did it mean to me to be a Jew. And as I read this story and saw some connections to my own life, my own identity, um, some of my own anxieties about leaving home, seeing the, what my grandmother had experienced, and um, not really knowing the full story. Once I read the full story, it just struck me that this was such a meaningful part of um, my family's history and was and connected to me in an interesting way. So. And you wanted to feel something, what your grandma had felt? Yeah, I mean, part of what I was trying to figure out with this book was how to bridge this big gap between my life and hers. Uh, my life being so comfortable and not having the kinds of dramas or losses or tragedies and to think that somebody that I was so close to had experienced something so different from me uh, that was a hard thing to wrap my head around and then I also wanted to understand how this experience connected to my own psychology um, and part of trying to understand that had to do with accessing these stories in a more visceral way so feeling some of the things that she'd felt um, yeah, when and, you, when yeah. you say feeling, you grew, you grew up in the suburbs in, in, mm -hmm. in Boston. Yeah. Obviously, you had a different life. Did you feel any guilt if you felt bad at all and said, yeah. well, it's not as bad as Bobby Lil? Or yeah. I think um, it's, yeah, guilt is a good word for it. I mean, that's a common Jewish inheritance. Um, yeah. And I do think it has a lot to do with this, this feeling of, like, if I feel anxious, if I feel worried, it's nothing in comparison to what a lot of subsequent generation. So how do you, how do you feel about uh, being part of the book? <laughs> how could I not feel to telling a story of my past youth? And I mean, it's exciting. You know, I didn't remember everything, but it's exciting that's been told. And are you excited for, for Amy? Are you excited for Amy? I'm I'm so proud of all my grandkids, uh, but Amy especially is a heart. She's very, very talented. Yeah, it's very exciting. After me, I didn't believe that I could, I mean, come to America and establish something like uh, that. Beautiful family, lots of friends. Uh, that made me very proud. And is it nice to have your story of your life in a book? Well, I don't know if it's nice, it should be told, because yeah. everybody had a different story, you know. Right. I saved myself almost alone. Right. I wasn't in the camp, but I was in the ghetto of Warsaw, there was hell. Right. My little sister died on my hand, asking right. for a piece of bread. Yeah. And then I put in a mess grave. Yeah. Well, my mom was the one who gave me this transcript that Bubby had done. Um, and so she was supportive of me wanting to write about this and memorialize it and commemorate the history. Um, I think it was hard for her to, you know, to let me be so public with something so personal. It's not really her approach. I think my generation is more comfortable with that and sees the kind of power of publicizing difficult stories, publicizing personal stories. But I think my mom got on board pretty quickly because she saw um, that was a meaningful thing to do. And you, you came to Detroit to visit a lot, mm -hmm. and, and you saw your grandma. Yeah. What, what did you think about your grandma as a kid? <laughs> and, oh, she had an yeah. accent, and she... Yeah. What were, I, your, what were your thoughts? I mean, I, I accepted and loved her, but I did notice, obviously, that she was, um, you know, different from the, like, American grandma on TV. I mean, she was... Um, much more eccentric and her habits were funny to me you know the like putting towels on the floor to cover up the carpet and cover up the furniture and collecting coins and cans from the side of the road like why would you do that if you have such a nice house to come home to those things were always very 
they just struck me as meaningful and interesting and funny. Like, you know, and I think that humor is part of the way that I think Jews often deal with their traumatic inheritance inheritances. And, and um, how, how long did it take you to put this all together, to, to draw and mm -hmm. go through the transcripts? And yeah, oh. I mean, it took a really long time. Um, the whole saying. book from beginning to end was about eight years, eight years yeah. but I was doing a lot of other things in the meantime. So, right. I mean, the first draft took about a year and a half when I was, um, or maybe two years, partly when I was in college and then right after. And, you know, going through the transcripts and drawing and writing. Um, and then after that first draft was done, um, I got serious about putting it into the world and really refining it to be more professional and more sophisticated. Um, and then that was a many years process because my skills had to, I had to work on my art skills and my writing skills. Um, so then that's why, you know, it took many, many years before the final book was out in the world. You've, you've had uh, cartoons in New Yorker. How many mm -hmm. have you had now? I've sold 12 cartoons. To the New Yorker? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I think that's maybe so ten of, ten, nine or ten of them have been published. And wow. so there's... You know, a few, and and I'm trying to sell more. So wish me luck with that. Wish you <laughs> luck, and, and how's the book doing? The book's doing really well. What's the reaction of people to the book? I mean, people seem to love it. They seem to really love Bubby, um, and they seem to respond to the way that I framed this history as, you know, trying to sort of connect it to my own experience. Because I think a lot of people relate to the these stories as being really distant and and far away from their everyday reality in America if they're in my generation but a lot of Jewish people and not just Jews like people of all immigrant cultures grow up hearing stories of their grandparents and right. and I think that they struggle to imagine them and to understand how they are a part of their own identities and so I think that I'm doing something that people have really related to even non-Jews um, so that's been nice to, to, to see.